Hi, Dwayne. Thanks for joining me on Aston Originals. Now, today we're talking about weight loss injections. They've been making headlines in the past week. Could you tell us more about why they're in the spotlights and what you think of these headlines? I think they're in the, the, the headlines because it's an interesting new drug. It's a tool that people living with overweight and obesity, who find, a lot of us find it very hard to manage and lose weight. So it's an extra tool that can help people who need to lose weight to improve their health. However, a number of these headlines have quite stigmatizing words in them. You, know, you can see their flab jab. You know, this is not helpful. We have enough stigma about body image, body shape, body size, that we need to be positive about this is to improve health. It is not about trying to help people feel slim or be slim. And the idea that it's favoured by celebrities is not relevant for this NHS recommendation, which is about improving health. It's targeted at people who are higher body weight, who have other health conditions to improve their health, not about being slim. And it's nothing about trying to get yourself into a certain shape for a certain situation that you might be coming up in your life. Now, as a dietitian, you comment regularly uh, in the press on health and nutrition news. Has this latest development in the weight loss industry come as a surprise to you? Not really, because there's other similar drugs to this that have come out in the past. Um, the difference with this one, if you look at the research, there's some controversy about the research in that there's links to the people making it, which we'll leave alone for today. But this one has this uh, evidence of a 10% greater weight loss compared to placebo. The important thing in these trials, it wasn't just the, the drug they're on or the placebo, they were giving lifestyle advice. So both groups lost weight. So it's about improving what you eat and also be more physically active and being supported in doing that. Because I can't say enough, losing weight is challenging. So it's great that there's another tool available, but it needs to be used for the right reasons in the right situations with the right support. Now, firstly, tell us a bit more about these injections. Uh, how do they work and what's in them? So this one is Wegovi is the one that's been licensed, which is a brand name. Its generic name is semaglutide. And the type of drug it is, it's called a GLP-1 receptor agonist. GLP-1 is a hormone. Our body produces it when we're eating, and it has several effects. One, it works on our pancreas to balance the levels of insulin and glucagon, but also it has an effect on our stomach to make it empty more slowly so we feel more fuller. That can also lead to some side effects as well, which we sure we'll talk about and it may also have an effect on our brain to affect how we choose food so it makes, makes us feel fuller so we choose to eat less and that's how it helps to lead to weight loss alongside changing what you eat being more physically active and keeping that going for a period of time now do they have any side effects and how long can you take these drugs for so the way it's been approved in for England and Wales is you can take for at least six months if you lose more than 5% body weight, then you can take up to 24 months. The reason for that mainly is because we don't have enough, have enough data beyond that point. If you're talking about side effects, for most people, it would be feeling nauseous, sick, bloated because your stomach's not emptying. So if you're trying to eat more, it'll feel full. There is some data from similar drugs. And if we go back to some of the trials with the older versions of these class of drugs, with possibly pancreatic diseases, the manufacturers would argue, and it is plausible that people of a higher body weight and who are living with obesity may have higher risk of pancreatic disease because of their size, but also linked to possible risk of type 2 diabetes. And in some of the very early studies, although the drugs are quite different now, there was even concerns about some of the changes to the thyroid gland as well, which was quite, quite concerning. Gosh, yes, that would be concerning. Um, now, is it counterintuitive to have this kind of injection, do you think, um, when some people maybe just need to focus on healthy diet um, and exercise? I think that's a great point. And I think we need to recognise that obesity isn't a choice. Living with obesity or living with a higher body weight is not a choice. It's a product partly of our genetics, but also our environment, which makes food readily available all around the clock particularly highly tasty foods that are high in fat, salt and sugar. So it's easy to overconsume. We also live in a world which doesn't encourage us to enjoy physical activity. It can be very easy to be sat down a lot of the time and not moving. So we've got these two factors that in our modern world mean it's easier to gain weight. 
our genetics haven't moved on and some some people are more prone to gaining weight because of their genetics and historically that's been an advantage in the modern world we, we tend to be oversupplied with food so we need to look structurally at our food environment so we can make it easier to make healthier choices easier to be physically active and then in the meantime and ongoing to support people to make easier choices and enjoy those healthier choices so they can maintain their health and that can also lead to maintained weight management or even further weight loss if they need to yeah i mean and that brings me on to the question um of are we at risk of reducing the value of all of these things of eating well of being physically active um if these products like these weight injections become more widely available if we look at the headlines we could be tempted to think that and that's why it's important to have these sort of conversations to really reiterate that we need to look at the key things of food and physical activities, not just from a health point of view, from a human point of view. Eating is important for us as a society. And if you've got injections that are falsely changing how you, you interact with food, your food choices might be different. You might not enjoy food as much. So we still need to put a lot of emphasis on supporting people to make healthier food choices and also making our food environment as healthy as possible. So it's easier for people to make healthier choices. So, Partly, headlines can make us think that, but it's important that we have conversations that we look how we can value food and actually value how we can gain health and enjoy gaining health through food and physical activity. Now, who should be considering these sorts of drugs for, for weight loss? Because I'm assuming they're not for everybody, um, but there will be certain groups that, that would be eligible. So if we look at the England and Wales, the NICE guidance, they are particularly aimed at people with a higher body weight, what we call a body mass index of 35. That's a measurement of weight divided by um, height in meters squared, the weight in uh, kilograms, and that's above 35 uh, kilograms per meter squared. But not just if they're healthy at that body weight, it's for people with other risk factors. So what we call altered glucose, so that could be pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure. It could be if there's something wrong with the fats in the blood, such as high cholesterol. Something called sleep apnea is another reason why people might be advised. And generally, then they'll be part of a specialist weight management service. So they may have access and support from a psychologist, a medical team, but also from dietitians who will support them to make healthier food choices which suit them and hopefully they can stick to so they can be successful long term. Now, do you think we're in danger of people trying to buy these drugs after seeing celebrities using them online and newspaper articles, you know, making reference to these celebrities? I think we, we're living in a media, in particular social media culture, where we see falsely slim ideals of what human should look like. And we rarely see that whole diversity of human shape and size. And that's problematic. Plus, we hear news of celebrities taking these for, for certain circumstances, which is not good. Because if we lose weight and gain weight and lose weight and gain weight, that can change our body composition so we can not have as much muscle mass, which can impact on our health long term. So looking at this idea of this celebrity culture and this ideal of slim is not looking at an ideal of health. And we need to reshape conversations about how we can promote that health can look in all its diversities. There's been a lot of critique as, you know, this idea of body positivity, because it's seen to celebrate people living at higher body weight who may be at higher risk of things like cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. I think we need to look at what we call body neutrality, that we don't judge someone on their body shape and size. We help them to achieve the best health they can. And that may, for them, help them to lose weight. And if they have the risk factors, as I mentioned, such as problems with the glucose in their blood, the pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and their body weight is such a level, they could benefit from this, but they need to be supported. And the focus is on how they feel about themselves, but also how they improve their health. It's not necessarily the number on the scale of trying to look a certain way. Okay. Well, thank you, Dwayne, for joining us today on Aston Originals. Thank you.